Sussex inflict further suffering on Durham's bowlers as the home side dominate day three at Hove. Day two of this match at Hove belonged completely to one man. After eight months out with a knee injury, Luke Wells played the innings of a lifetime to decimate Durham's attack. He hit 34 fours and seven sixes in his 258 and dominated a partnership of 376 with Stian Van Ziel, who was 141 not out overnight. Sussex resumed on 452 for four, a lead of 165, and they clearly intended to bat the visitors out of the game on day three. The South African was soon back in the groove, but only briefly. After a couple of early boundaries, he was beaten and bowled by Rushworth. Van Ziel's 149 included 17 fours and one six. But his departure provided little respite for Durham because Michael Burgess simply picked up the mantle. The wicketkeeper hit a flurry of fours to edge his side towards the 500 mark. But they didn't get there before Chris Jordan was dismissed, caught and bowled by Coughlin for just a single. Undaunted, Burgess soon brought up his first championship 50 for Sussex, including eight fours. And he found another winning ally in David Visa, who also seemed to only be dealing in boundaries. The South African quickly raced to 30 before he hit Cameron Steele straight to mid-on. But Sussex were hardly in trouble at 550 for seven. They'd reached their highest ever score against Durham before Burgess was dismissed, bowled by Pringle for 76. But the thirst for runs seemed unquenchable, with Philander and Archer both getting in on the act before lunch, which came with Sussex 586 for eight, their lead a mighty 299 runs. The advantage was 301 when Philander fell at the start of the afternoon session, caught on the boundary of Steele. At 588 for nine, Durham might have thought the hard work was done, but they were very wrong. Instead, Joffre Archer gave another exhibition of his undoubted talent as he launched an assault on the tiring bowlers. He hit Pringle for six to bring up the 600 and then clubbed Steele for two more maximums. Archer reached 50 to follow his five wickets in Durham's innings and he wasn't finished there. When he was finally out for 70, caught by Rushworth off Pringle, he'd added 80 for the 10th wicket with Danny Briggs. 668 all out meant a lead of 381 runs. It was also Sussex's fifth highest total of all time in first class cricket. The car dominated by Wells and Van Ziel with the icing on the cake from Burgess and Archer. A day and a half to forget for Durham's bowlers. And their attempt to make a dent on that massive deficit couldn't have made a worse start. Cook edging Philander's first ball to Jordan at slip, naught for one. Cameron Steele's attempt to fight back had barely got started when Philander struck again. Jennings comprehensively beaten and gone for five. From 11 for two, Steele and Clark attempted to fight back, but the introduction of Chris Jordan to the attack soon paid off. He had Steele well caught down low in the slips by Nash for 14, and Clark's resistance was soon broken too by the England man, LBW for 16. Durham were grateful for the tea interval, which found them 43 for four, still 338 runs behind. Their first mission after the interval was to steady what seemed to be a sinking ship, and in Paul Collingwood they had the man for the job. The skipper dropped anchor in partnership with Ryan Pringle, and as the sea mist rolled into Hove, Durham finally began to halt the Sussex charge. Collingwood and Pringle edged their way to a very patient 50 partnership, which took almost two hours, and Durham survived to stumps without further loss, 97 for four means the deficit is still 284 going into the final day. The visitors will surely need to bat all day to prevent Sussex securing their first championship win of the season.